Hi, I'm Dr. Daryl Rich with Core Chiropractic and Wellness in downtown Roanoke. This week, we are here to ask you the question, what is the most important muscle of the body? You know, I've been asked a number of really strange questions over my 16 years in practice, but I don't think I've ever been asked that one. So I'm gonna ask you that. What do you think is the most important muscle in the body? Do you think it's the abdominals, maybe the glutes, the quads? Well, all of those would be good answers, but none of those muscles would qualify as the most important muscle the most important muscle in the body is actually the diaphragm. It doesn't matter if you're a sprinter, a marathoner, a football player, a tennis player, swimmer, cyclist, uh, even just a couch potato. The diaphragm is the central uh, key muscle to every athletic movement that we do. Without the diaphragm, many of our movements would be very uncoordinated. They'd certainly be unstable. They wouldn't be very strong. And not to mention that you need the diaphragm to breathe. So first, let's discuss what the actual diaphragm even does. Remember, the, the lungs of the diaphragm work on a negative pressure system, which basically means that when you inhale, air from the outside rushes in, and when you exhale, the air rushes out, right? So when we inhale, the diaphragm contracts and actually moves inferiorly, moves downward, and this opens up the lungs and creates a vacuum where air can rush in. And likewise, when you exhale, the diaphragm just relaxes and air is forced out. Uh, these same actions are inc just, again, incredible to how the diaphragm can move downward and, and upward, and it creates this type of pressure in our abdomen or between the diaphragm and the pelvic floor that's known as intra-abdominal pressure. It's this pressure that's actually the prime stabilizer of the spine. It's not the muscul musculature of the, of the lumbars. It's not the abs. It's not this, again, mythical core that we you know, think about what we're, what we're training. It's actually the diaphragmatic pressure that's created in the abdomen that produces the stability. But to do that properly, we have to remember how to breathe. And when I ask you know, patients, hey, do you remember how to breathe? They look at me like I'm crazy because how would they forget how to breathe? Well, if you ever watch an infant laying on its back, you'll notice that their kind of big bubble-like belly uh, will expand and decrease, you know, kind of rises and falls, but the movement of the ribs and chest don't move. And this is actually opposite of how 90% of our adults breathe. You know, most adults, because we sit so much at a, at a chair or drive or at a computer or looking down on our phone, we have this lack of movement. And so we actually use uh, this abdominal accessory muscles, you know, our breathing abscessal muscles, like the shoulders and the neck, to help with our breathing, which should only be used like during exercise when we're having labored breathing. But unfortunately, they use this uh, type of breathing all day long, which can lead to shoulder tension, uh, lumbar spine pain, it can lead to headaches, and a whole host of other problems. So before I begin here, I want to again talk about how the diaphragm works properly when it produces interdominal pressure. It actually works like a balloon, right? It actually kind of stabilizes it almost like a weight belt. In fact, better than any weight belt you could ever use. This interdominal pressure it creates a lot of stability for the spine. Now, if you're a runner, if you're breathing properly, that becomes the diaphragm and that link of the interdominal pressure is the link between the upper body and the lower body, creating this stability effect around the spine. This allows the shoulders and hips to work together for a faster run. Same with swimmers, uh, throwing athlete, racket sports, golfers, even a cyclist. The key to spinal stabilization is the key to elite performance. And your ability to stabilize the spine during those movements will dictate really how good of an athlete you are. Um, and in fact, now again, we're realizing that it's not just the core muscles that are part of that, it's actually the diaphragm that's important. So this diaphragmatic breathing becomes the link, if you will, between the upper half and the lower half of the body, which is, helps us to, again, to perform at a high elite level. Now, obviously there are plenty of great athletes that are, um, you know, they, they've learned to compensate around this. They actually are such great at, com uh, compensating. They're such great athletes in general. They've worked their way around it. Unfortunately, when they do that, they will lack power. They will lack stability. And they're actually going to find that that's going to create often their weakest link. Their thing that's the most common injury of their body. Uh, we see this all the time with, uh, again, some of our more experienced athletes. They continue to have sometimes the same issue. And it's due to that's their compensation pattern. So if we can help them fix that compensation pattern, we can help them reduce that chronic injury. And breathing is the most foundational movement that we do, which is why we have to work on practicing it. And that's what practitioners like myself 
again, people in our field educate and we treat people to maximize that performance, which helps to decrease their injuries. So today we were trying to give you a few exercises to help you learn how to breathe properly. So I hope you watch these next few uh, exercises that we're going to show here, and I want you to practice them every day. Again, breathing is such an important thing. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Our website, again, is coreroanoak.com. Thanks a lot. Hello. Today we want to talk to you about intra-abdominal pressure and particularly breathing exercises that can help us to develop this. This is an important piece for lumbar and core stabilization. So this occurs because the diaphragm can actually pressurize or actually activate and push pressure down into the abdomen. And of course that's uh, kind of counteracted by the pelvic floor that keeps that pressure around the whole lumbar spine, and that's what creates stability. So to do that, we have to be able to breathe properly, and many of us don't breathe properly because we sit too much, or we're on the computer, or we're on the phone, and so instead of using the lateral expanding uh, musculature of the diaphragm, which helps to produce, again, that core stabilization, we actually use the shoulders and the neck, and the accessory muscles to breathe, so we kind of breathe more in our chest, and we don't breathe abdominally. So to test this, all you're gonna do is take your hands, just kind of place them in the soft tissues uh, around your belly, and all the way around your low back as well. And as you just take a small deep breath in and let it out, ask yourself the question, what do you feel move? So do you feel the abdomen expand, almost again like in a, a hoop, like, a, like, a, like you're pressurizing or putting pressure against your belt? Or do you feel pr the breathing coming from your upper back and chest? So if you're really struggling with this, not uncommon, actually it's very common for people to struggle with this. So we're gonna give you a couple of activities, a way to kind of help with that. So first of all, we can help you is put you in the right position. So let's try child's pose. It's a really great position for this, for this activity. So if we get on hands and knees, kind of drop your hips back over your feet, on your elbows and your hands, and in this position, take that breath in through, uh, into your lower abdomen, and you should feel that kind of expand well into your flank. You should feel your, your lower uh, kind of, you know, abdominal area expand again as you breathe that in and let it out. And practice taking a slow breath in over the count of three seconds and let it out for the count of five. Great. So now if you're able to do that, you can advance on to the next one, which is a, the three-month supine position. So we've shown this a lot in some of our exercises, and this is a great, again, way to develop good breathing habits. And so as you lay on your back, you're going to bring your hips and your knees up to 90. This should flatten out your low back. Nice little pillow underneath your head is good just to kind of keep your neck very neutral. And again, take those hands, and you should feel them in the soft tissues, and go ahead and take that breath in through the nose and let it back out. Again, you should feel the expansion in your abdomen, but truly you should feel it down deep into your pelvis. You should feel that movement, that, that uh, pressurization deep in against that pelvic floor. Again, as you breathe in and let it out. So if you suffer with low back pain or shoulder, uh, chronic neck tension, uh, chronic headaches, try breathing again, right? It's a great way to kind of create a good firm foundation for all of your core uh, movements and core training. Uh, I would suggest try this in the, in the morning when you first get out of bed. Uh, I would maybe try to do it if you can master it, do it while maybe even driving. And if you get to the point where you're doing it even throughout the rest of your daily activities, it's really, really helpful to kind of, again, groove that pattern to learn how to breathe again properly. Hope this helps you. Take care.